So you have a choice. You can either be a battery or you can be collateral for money. Now, if you decide you don't want either, then congratulations, you're on the way to freedom. But if you chose one or the other, you might not have realized you're actually both. So simple framing is this, like when you were a kid, your mom or dad might have said, do you want uh, chocolate, ice cream, or vanilla? And instead you said pizza. They have framed the, your choice in that respect and you've broken that frame. And in that sense, it's a, a form of liberation. As a kid, you don't really understand it. As you move on as, as an adult, then in some cases, you can actually see that frame in action. Some of the shows that are best to watch to notice framing are shows like Suits or Billions. And it's there you get a lot of the framing on an ongoing basis. There's so many different examples. It's all a power struggle. And one frame breaking another, breaking another, come back, breaking another. So one of the best books to understand frames is uh, the book called Pitch Anything and really good at really showing you what a frame is and how it works in certain meetings and circumstances. Now, of course, if you take this framing philosophy and use it throughout your life, then, you know, you can actually become kind of miserable. It's not, it's a form of manipulation. It's there, it's good to notice it. Like in certain situations with me within meetings and you know, certain power dynamics, but for the most part, I think it's uh, a manipulation game and I certainly wouldn't want to keep my energy like focused on that all the time because I think it's distorted manipulation on an ongoing basis. But for some, they feed off of it and they love it. I think as a society, we've actually been framed. I mean, if you look at it from birth on, you've been framed. You've been framed to be a battery. That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. You've been framed to be collateral as soon as you got a birth certificate and your name was in all caps. You can look historically at that, but basically early on in the United States, became bankrupt, went into being a corporation, and used their citizens as collateral for money. There's a lot of different people exposing the fact that we are actually a corp, that we were a corporation, and we were under maritime law versus common law. I'm not saying I understand all that, but there's one little part that I do understand, and that is the framing aspect of it. All it takes is framing choices in a certain way. And that framing is power in and of itself. And I think collectively we've been framed. We've been framed into accepting choices where we could have a multitude of many other things that are possible. And in that sense, we've actually contributed to our slavery. Now there's ongoing examples of framing action because language is replete with all this going on all the time, including just little stuff like a policeman calling your, uh, asking you to get out of the vehicle. When they call it a vehicle, it's very different from if you call it a car or an automobile. A vehicle implies commerce among, amongst many other things. And the language that they use, like saying, do you understand? It's a form of framing and it puts you in a certain situation. So it's knowing these frames, but what's amazing to me is we've had this framing as a society on an ongoing basis, meaning we've we get the lar, uh, smaller framing of you as a person when you come into this world and seeing instead of your choice being one of being a, uh, a human being on a planet versus uh, being part of a country and in within a particular group, one is very different from the other. But on a larger sense, uh, as, a, as a society, as a, as a whole world, we've been framed. Meaning, we've been framed into accepting our servitude. But if you look historically, you'll notice that these battles have been going on for ages and beyond history, which we have yet to even understand. So when you look at that, you realize, okay, there are these battles, ongoing battles, good versus evil that have gone on for a long time. And I think a lot of these battles are around the idea of slavery versus freedom. 
So one of my favorite people to look at uh, for history is uh, Matthew LaCroix. And this guy's fantastic. He looks at cuneiform tablets, and the cuneiform tablets have a lot of history within them. They show some things uh, worldwide that are really, really interesting. And some of the things are just right out there in the open, and yet people don't notice them. Like pyramids all around the world. Pyramids everywhere. Battles that have been fought over time, over and over again. Destruction happening again and again, over and over. Disasters and destruction. And each time, the cycle that happens, doesn't lead to liberation. And yet now, we have a chance to have that liberation. But it's not just the liberation for what we've lived. It's all the liberation for all this stuff before us, way back, like thousands and thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, a long time. In some ways, it's almost like a collective karma that's been repeated over and over and over and over again. And now as we come to the end of it, it's like, boom. It's bigger than, than any of us could probably understand. And the, but the problem is seeing it come down to one person. Although that one person is definitely key in the whole thing. Even if that one person wasn't there, at this point in time, it would still happen. That's liberation also because it removes the idea of one person and places it with many. So those are just some thoughts. I think that historically we've seen some of this happen before, and I think it's bigger than maybe we could ever really imagine, and we all fit in it in a different way. People that became critical that you wouldn't identify as critical, they showed up, but it's just a, a phase and it doesn't mean that what you did in showing up is the only opportunity, it's the most important opportunity. No, it isn't. God has a particular sequence, and in the next phase, some people in your listenership may be exactly the person that absolutely must be there at some phase to bring other people to the story who then have some other form, uh, relationship, knowledge, access, something that carries this message forward to the next spot. It's a relay. And figuring out intuitively where you might fit into it is a good thing to practice and then put forth what, whatever that might be. So there's just some thoughts. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like. Remember the best is yet to come, maybe even by tomorrow. And remember, where we go one, we go all.